Hello everyone, Zaid from Zed Security here and in today's video, as I promised on our social media channels, follow us there if you haven't done so already, I will be hacking my friend's computer using this Android phone. Now, I already have permission to use his computer because I help him with a lot of computer tasks, but I will also get his permission before I publish this video, so I'm doing nothing illegal in here. Before we get into the video, please make sure you like the video. This really helps the YouTube algorithm push my videos more. It also tells me that you're enjoying my content, which will make me make more content. So the more likes equals more videos. Now let's get to it. So right here, I have a normal Android phone that is configured to register itself as a keyboard when connected to a computer. Therefore, I can program it to send specific keystrokes when connected. These keystrokes are gonna execute specific commands that will send a reverse connection to my computer right here. This will allow me to fully control the target computer and I'll be able to do anything that the normal user can do on their computer. So you'll be able to list the files, upload, download, do whatever you want and we'll actually have some fun with this and we'll turn on his webcam and see what he's up to. I will walk you through the exact steps on how to set this up later on in the video. But for now, let me show you the attack in action. So I'm literally going to walk into his office. I'm going to ask him, can I charge my phone using your computer? It's not working in my computer. He'll definitely say yes. When I plug my phone into his computer, it's going to register itself as a keyboard. It's going to send specific commands really, really quickly and type them through his computer as if they're being typed on a keyboard. The commands will send me access here and we'll see how we're going to be able to control his computer from here. Before I go, I just want to apologize for the camera angles. I'm going to be recording from my phone and I'm going to put it in my pocket with the lens coming out because I don't want him to get suspicious. He'll think, why am I recording him as I'm walking into the office? So just for this portion of the video, the camera angles are not going to be perfect. Now let's go. Mind if I try this phone? Oh, it's not charging there. I haven't trained for a week, man. Yeah, I think so. Little charge, yeah. What's the name of that Now, as you can see at the bottom there, the connection is sent to my computer. I continued with a bit of small talk and then left the office. And back at the hacker computer in here, as you can see, we have a connection back from the target computer and we can use this to completely control the target computer remotely and we can do anything the target user can do. I won't cover all of the things that you can do using this interpreter access because that'll take a very long time. I cover it in my courses, so check them out if you want to learn more or simply look up in Google how to use interpreter to see what can you do with this access. But for now, just quickly, so you get an idea of what we can do. First of all, I'm going to run sysinfo to get information about the computer that we gained access to. And as you can see, we have the computer name, the operating system that it runs, the architecture and so on. We can also do help to see all of the commands and all of the things that you can do with this payload. Now, just to show you that we can actually do anything that the user can do, I'm going to try to access the webcam of the computer that we hacked into right now. Now, usually we don't do this in a real life scenario because it leaves a lot of tracks and there is no point of turning on the webcam. But in my demos, I feel like it really gets the idea across of how we can fully control the target computer right now and use all of its components. So if I type webcam and double tap, we'll see all of the things that we can do with the webcam. And I'm going to do webcam snap first to simply take a picture. And as you can see, we have a picture here from the target computer. Keith isn't sitting straight in front of the camera, so we can't really see him. Uh, I'm going to close this and let's actually start a live stream. So we're going to do webcam stream. 
and as you can see now we have a live stream of the camera and we can see the office we can see Keith moving and I'm actually gonna call him to show him that I actually gained access to his computer now that we've seen the attack in action, let's get technical and let's talk about how you can actually run this yourself. So first of all, as you've seen, you need a device to run the keystrike attack. So you can use an Android phone like I did right here. Uh, the thing with the Android phone, it needs to be rooted and it needs to have a kernel that is patched so that it can register itself as a keyboard. If you install NetHunter, you'll be doing all of this automatically, or you can just manually install a kernel that can do this and root the phone. Alternatively, if you don't want to use an Android device, you can actually use a USB rubber ducky or any of the bad USBs that are out there. You can buy them off the shelf. They look like a normal storage USB device, but when you connect it to a computer, it can register itself as a keyboard and you can use the exact same steps and the exact same code that I'm gonna show you right now to run whatever attacks you want to run. You can even, if you have some hardware knowledge, you can actually create your own USB devices. So you can have a joystick, a controller, a lamp, or any device that can connect through USB and weaponize it in a way to register itself as a keyboard and run a keystrike attack. I actually did this in my last conference in Orlando. So I'm gonna include a link to it if you wanna see that uh, in action. And let me know if you wanna get technical with the hardware part of it on how to create your own bad USB devices. I'll get Adrian, Adrian's amazing at this and I think he'll do a great job at it. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see how to do that. But uh, going back to the requirements for this attack, you will need a device that can run the keystroke attack. And like I said, you can pick any device you want. And the next step is you need a computer um, that is ready to receive connections and you'll need a backdoor to be downloaded and executed on the target computer so it can send connections to this computer right here. So let's get to my computer and I'll walk you through the steps one by one. So let's start with the script that did all of the magic. It's a very simple script that downloads a file and executes it on the target system. Like I said, you can use this with any device that can register itself as a keyboard. I am using a phone in this example, but you can also do this using a rubber ducky or any other device that is capable of running keystroke attacks. Let me walk you through the script quickly so you have a better understanding of what it does. First of all, everything you see in yellow are ducky commands and everything else are the commands options. So the first command is GUI and it basically simulates a press to the Windows button on the keyboard and we're typing R to simulate a press of the Windows button and R to open the run window. We're using the delay command to wait for 200 milliseconds to wait for the run window to open. Once that window is open, we're using the string command to type everything that you see in white in the run window. What you see in white there is a command to start an elevated PowerShell window. We're using the enter command to simulate a press to the return button. Then we're waiting for two seconds to wait for the PowerShell window to open. Because we're running an elevated PowerShell window, the user will see a warning saying, do you actually want to do this? So we're using the Alt command and Y to simulate a press or a click on the yes option. We're gonna wait for 900 milliseconds for the actual PowerShell window to load. And once this window loads, we're using the string command again to type everything that you see there in white. What you see there in white are PowerShell commands that'll allow us to download and execute a file. The file that I'm using is not great. It actually gets detected by Windows Defender. Therefore, the first line in here will disable Windows Defender real-time protection. Then I'm creating a web client object that I'm gonna use to download the file. We're gonna create a variable to hold the file name. Then we're using the web client to download our file from this URL right here and store it as the file name that we set. 
then we're gonna create a shell application object and use it to execute the file that we downloaded. Now, so far the user still sees a PowerShell window, so we'll use the exit command to close this window. This is a very quick breakdown of the script. I hope it makes sense. I went quickly through it because I can actually make a full course on Ducky scripts and Ducky commands, and I can make an even bigger course on PowerShell. So if you want to learn more, check out the free resources in the description. But the main thing in here is that this script will basically allow us to download a file from this URL right here and then execute it on the target system. So the next step right now is to create this file that will be downloaded and executed on the target system and give us access to the system so we can hack it and control it. Now I cover a number of methods to create undetectable backdoors in my social engineering course and I even cover how to program your own backdoor from scratch in my Python course. But right now I want a quick way of creating a backdoor because I don't want to make this video too long and it's fine if it gets detected by Windows Defender because as we seen earlier our script will first disable Windows Defender before it even downloads the file. So I'm going to use MSF Venom to create it. So we're just going to do MSF Venom dash p to specify the payload. This is the part of the program that will do something useful for us. So I'm going to use a interpreter payload to give me full control over the target computer. We're going to set my own IP using the lhost argument and I can get my own IP by doing if config. And as you can see, it's 192.168.112. Then I'm going to use the L port option to specify the port that the connection will be sent back to and I'm going to set that to 8080. Then I'm going to use the dash F argument to specify the file type that will be created and I want this to be an executable. And I'm going to store this in a file called s.exe. We're going to hit enter. So it's a very simple command. We're using MSF Venom to create the file. We're choosing the payload to be Windows Meterpreter Reverse TCP. This is a backdoor that sends a reverse TCP connection to the IP that we specify in the lhost argument on the port that we specify in the L port argument. And we're storing this in a file called s.exe. And it's telling us that all of this is done now. And if we do ls to list all of the files in the current working directory, we'll see we have a file called s.exe. So that's ready to be delivered to the target. Now, if we look at our code, we can see that the code is going to download this file from a URL. So you can upload this file to any file sharing service you want, or you can use Apache 2, which is a web server that comes with Kali Linux. So first of all, I'm going to copy this file to the location where Apache loads its files from. So we're going to use the CP command to do that. And the file we want to copy is called s.exe, as you can see. And we're going to copy that to the location where Apache loads its files from. And that is var www.html. We see nothing on screen, which means the command got executed with no errors. And now we just need to start Apache, the web server that will be serving this file right here. So we're going to start it by doing service. Apache to start. Again, no errors means the command got executed successfully. So now if we just load a web browser and load this URL, you'll see that the file will load for us. Let me show you. So I'm going to open up my web browser and I'm going to go to my IP, which is 192.168.112, followed by the file name, which is s.exe. You'll see you will be able to download the file. So when the script runs this URL right here, it will be able to download the file. So that's perfect. The file will be downloaded. The script will also automatically execute that file. And the file is going to send a reverse connection, like we said, to this IP address on port 8080. 
Therefore, we need to be waiting for incoming connections on that port. To do that, we're gonna use MSF console. So I'm gonna clear the screen and type MSF console to load the MSF framework. And then we're gonna use exploit multi handler to listen for incoming connections. We're gonna set the payload to the same payload that we chose when we, when we created the backdoor and it was Windows Meterpreter reverse TCP. We're gonna set the L host to the same IP that we set when we created the backdoor and that was my IP, which is 192.168.112. We're gonna set the L port to the same port that we set when we created the backdoor. And if we do show options, you'll see that we set everything exactly the same way that we did when we created the backdoor. And now that we're happy with everything, I'm gonna do exploit to run this handler and wait for incoming connections. So when this script gets executed, when this file is downloaded and executed on the target, the connection will be sent to here and I'll be able to control the target computer, run commands on it, run all of the commands that Meterpreter allows me to run. So I'll be able to list the file system, control the computer, and even turn on the webcam as you seen earlier. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy it. Please make sure you like the video if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna stay updated with the latest in cybersecurity. And see you soon.